Hey everyone, it's Misty, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Create a Weekly Wisdom. Today I want to share with you how to make these paper spools. These are great for storage um, of your laces, ribbon, twine, trim, any of those types of things. And they're really cute as well as for um, swaps and gifts and things like that. I am going to show you how you can use a designer paper and not just um, plain um, like chipboard. And so I have a couple pieces picked out for that. And I'm going to show you two different ways to make them as well. One, the first way I'm going to show you is using the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board. I think this is my favorite way. It's probably the easiest. But if you don't own one, I'm going to show you how to make it completely by hand with some simple supplies like scissors, trimmer, and pencil. So first I'm going to start with the envelope punch board. Um, it's just some of the supplies you'll need for this one is your the punch board and some kind of uh, corner rounder you can alternately skip this if you don't have one and you'll just have straight edges which is perfectly fine so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start off with our first piece and I'm using just some lightweight chipboard because I don't want to spend the extra time to actually put design paper over it and this is sturdy enough on its own but it's also thin enough to actually be used in the punch board I would not use medium weight chipper in your punch board. Um, this is already pretty thick to punch because it's very sturdy, it's, you know, it's very dense. Um, so we're going to start off with this size here and you can use any size you want. I am choosing this size which is three and a quarter by five inches. And I'm choosing this size because I have the um, IKEA Alex drawers and I have the skinnier unit and the tall drawers are just above five, in, 5 inches and the shallow drawers are just above three and a half. so no matter which way I want to use this or which drawer I can just turn it either way in my drawers so just measure your drawers and that's what you do the size the key to this is you're going to stick this and you want it to go one inch below the size of your actual paper here or your chipboard. Um, that way you have your little your little top part right here. The smallest I would ever go on this is um, would be like for this particular size is four and three quarters. If you do a half and an inch you're going to end up with it just coming to a point. So I would, I would never do a half inch. Three quarters of an inch is the smallest I would go here. And this way you have this area that is a little bit wider for your wider lace. But to make it easy, we're just going to do it one inch. So I'm going to go at the four inch mark here because we are using five inches. And then you just punch it down, flip it over. We're going to do four inches again punch it down and then we are going to flip it. Now it does not matter which way you flip this because it will punch all the same. And then four inches. Oops, I already did that side. Okay. Four inches. Four inches. And then you're going to have something like this which kind of reminds me of like those like a, a candy Okay, so then you're going to have lines, you're going to want to cut here, and you can either draw the line. If you don't have like the longer scissors, you might want to just draw a pencil line here, so that way you know it's completely straight and you don't end up having a wavy line. Or you can also use your trimmer. I think scissors will work just fine. And you're going to want to make sure that you're getting about the center of that um, curved area here so that you can just pull right in, line it up, and then cut all the way to the next center area. And then you'll have a pretty straight line. Nothing has to be super perfect. And then you're gonna repeat. And then I like just move my scissors down just a tad bit so I don't accidentally cut into there. And then there's your spool. Now like I said, you can make these smaller. Now my only thing is is don't go um, too small here and 
if you're doing a really skinny one you're not going to be able to use this because it goes in at a, a certain depth and so if you're trying to make tiny tiny spools you're going to want to do that one by hand and that'll be using our second um, technique for doing that so if you have a any type of corner rounder um, you can use the regular quarter inch now for this I would not use the half inch because this part does not sit correctly in here and so your rounding will be off um, I'm using the We Are Memory Keepers Cropodile Corner Chomper if you're wondering and this just has the quarter and the half inch and I'm going to go ahead and just use the quarter inch size and this is what you look like so you can keep it straight if you want or you can have it rounded it's not a perfect perfect rounding but it's pretty darn close So there is this one. Now like I said, if you want to cover it with paper, you just repeat the exact same process and then you just line it up and you glue it on. Now I would glue it on with some sort of liquid adhesive, um, not something that's super liquidy. This is a nice one because it's fast drying. This is the Tombow Mono um, Multi Liquid Glue and it has um, two different tips on it. It has a thin tip and a wide tip which makes it very easy application and not um, doesn't make your paper too wet so then it doesn't wrinkle okay so there's this and then if you have some kind of different corner rounder uh, you're gonna have to play to see which ones will work with the size that you're working with for your corner I also have this we are memory keepers corner tromper and this has a scalloped edge and that is what I used on this one Okay, so you can make it in smaller sizes, like I said. This is, all I did was cut this sheet in half, and then cut in, and cut in, and then I did the exact same process. And you can see how pretty the lace looks wrapped around it, and then I just stuck a little pin in there. So if I were doing a wider lace, or if a lace that's not too thick, I also have these little clips here, which are really nice and you're just going to wrap your lace around. Like I said, this is a really nice size. Even if you're not using the same drawers that I am, I really do like this size because it fits all your laces really nicely. Now you can make these longer for your widest lace or you can make these ends a little bit shorter to make this area a little bit longer. But I think an inch makes a really perfectly shaped top here for your spool. We're just going to wrap this around. And then you can use a pin or you can use these nice little clips that I have here. And I'll link these clips down below. These are clear and I think they're called alligator clips. I got them off Amazon and it's about, they have different size packages and it's about less than $10 for this one and you get 500 clips so I don't think I'll ever run out of these clips so these are really nice and um, this is nice too if that if for storage purposes you don't want to use a spool to wrap your stuff around you can just wrap your lace and clip it like I have right here I'll show you just you just push it on and it goes nicely it doesn't snag on any parts of the lace or anything and then you just have your lace all clipped and nicely together now, I like these because I want to be able to stack them where if it's loose like this it's not going to um, stand up in my drawer so you got this one now I'll show you how to do it with just cardstock so if you're going to use cardstock which is a great um, alternative if you want something decorative and you don't want to have to do tons of extra gluing. You can just use your designer cardstock, and this is comes in most um, paper pads. Have most of this thicker cardstock, 
that's what you want to use. If you're using the like this, like the thin, cheap cardstock or designer paper, it's not cardstock, it's designer paper, then you're going to want to back it with um, the lightweight chipboard or alternatively you can use um, recycled um, food packages like cereal boxes and that kind of stuff and that'll be great for using up your scraps for your designer paper. Now also this is a great way to use up your scraps for any type of um, cardstock. I literally pulled this out of my scrap bin. Okay, so if you're using the designer cardstock, I would stick two of them together because you can punch two at the same time and it, that way everything will be exactly the same and it's the same measurements for four or five inches by three and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the four mark here and we're going to punch and make sure your cardstock stays exactly together. That everything lines up. Okay, and then we're going to rotate it and we're going to go four again. Then we are going to flip it and go four inches. And then rotate four inches. Oops. Okay, then we're going to take our scissors and we're going to come right into the center area of that curve and go ahead and cut up, rotate it, and repeat. Like I said, this process does not have to be exactly perfect. But there you go, and it's when it's together, it's pretty thick. It's not quite as sturdy as the lightweight chipboard, but you're just putting lace on it. It's nothing heavy. It's it's pretty sturdy. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm actually going to corner chomp this with. Um, I'm actually gonna do this with the scallop so you can see what it looks like when you're sticking it in there. Now, if you like. I learned with this one with the scallop, it doesn't have an extra little guide down here like the quarter inch corner rounder does. So I kind of eyeball it and just kind of make it a little bit centered and even to what I want. And then I just do it. You can use regular adhesive for this if you wanted to, um, but it's harder to get around the edges and if you're going to constantly be moving it in and out of a drawer, your edges will start to fray and not stay so glued down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the liquid around the edges and I'm just putting a very thin so that none of this wrinkles up. And there you go. Now if you wanted to even go further, you could definitely go ahead and ink up your edges and make it even, you know, more finished looking. But that is up to you. Now I would do something like this if I were doing a swap, but for me personally, for storage purposes, I would just stick with the plain unfinished background. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is how to do this by hand without having a punch board. Like I said, this is a bit easier, but you don't necessarily need this. Now, there are a few other options. If you have, I mean, you can just cut it, which is easily enough, but you can also use a triangle punch, a heart punch, and also a square punch or a rectangle punch. You can use any of those things as well 
instead of the punch board. So I'm going to do one side by hand and then I'm going to do one side showing you using this heart punch. So this show you that you don't have to necessarily cut up hand, but cutting by hand is actually fairly easy. So you just won't get the nice curved inner part that's right here. That's pretty much the biggest difference and it's not going to be exactly punching it the same every time. So I like to use a clear ruler. I think that's the best way to do this. So I have my Tim Holtz um, Ideology clear ruler here and we're going to go ahead with a pencil so that we can erase lines. If so for the, um, for the side here, remember we went a half inch down or a, a whole inch down and this goes about a half inch in from here. So we're going to take our clear ruler and we're going to mark it one inch down and then we are going ahead and mark it a half inch in. So there's our half inch and our one inch down and your one inch down is where you want this dot to be not the your end dot. So I'm going to go ahead and re erase this little end dot here. Now what we're going to do since now you can keep this and just come down and do the same thing and then you're going to have a square. But I like the little angle that's that we have here. So all I'm going to do is come in a half inch down and create another dot on the edge. So we get a half inch and there. So when we cut, we're going to have this angle here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect those dots. And if you can see what I'm looking at here. Now, because you're doing this completely by hand, you can change it how it, if you want it a little wider or if you want it to come up and then over. You know, just you can be as creative as you want to be. You don't have to have it to go straight up like this. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom part. Here, so you can see, we're going to connect this line here. So this is, this does take a little longer. This is why I like the punch board. Because you don't have to do all these lines and then but if you don't own one, that's fine. You're doing the same thing. You're cutting down and cutting. And you can see the section will be cutting out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut and show you. So you're just going to very carefully step to one line. And you can use your trimmer for this as well if you didn't want to use scissors. And then we're just going to go in. And there you have it. You can definitely see it, you get that shape. Now on this side, so th this particular one's not going to be the same looking because <laughs> I want to show you another step. Now another way to do this is that you're going to go you're going to measure just a half inch or just an inch down and a half inch in. So like I remember I told you they have a line that goes all the way down this ruler and that's actually a half inch. So just line it up with that. And so a half or an inch down, a half inch in. And there's your dot. And then you can do the same thing on the other side here. It's lined up with the 5 inch mark. So we're going to go one inch and half inch and then you're going to mark. Now for this one, we, are, we don't need to draw the line unless you really want to. But I'm going to use this heart punch here and I'm going to show you. So if you had a diamond punch or rectangle square punch, basically what you're going to do is you want that little dot to line up with a, one of the very points. So on this heart, it's going to line up that point. If it was a square or a dime, if it was a square, you would turn your paper inside your punch so that that little dot would line up with the point. And what that's going to do, so like say this was your, your angle instead of it being a heart, you would get these two angles. It's going to cut out a little triangle shape. 
So we're going to go ahead and line it up and you just want to make sure that this part is as straight as it can be and then you're going to punch that through. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side and you're going to punch that through. Now, with using this, it does make this part just a tad bit shorter. So if you wanted to go a little bit more than an inch, you can. It's, it's all in your preference. And then you're going to take scissors. You're going to come right where that point is. Right where that point. Line your scissors up so that the tip of it is at the other point. And then you're just going to cut straight. Straight as possible. And there you have it. So you can even see that this is a tiny bit similar. Um, you're having this side here that was a little faster because you used a punch for this side. So we're going to go ahead and rate punch on this side. And then on this side it was completely done by hand. Now you can still do the same concept with doing your corner rounder with you in the quarter inch and you'll get the same effect as you did on the other one we did with the punch board. So there's the corner rounder. And you can see you still get one. Now this one it's a bit more uniformed with the punch board and you can see that it's just a little bit wider here and that's only because we use the heart punch on the one side. The heart punch actually goes in a little bit more than the rest of these. So if you wanted to, you can, you can make these wider or shorter depending on your measurements. So I hope you enjoyed and here are some just different ways that you can create these and in different sizes. And I hope you enjoy and you have lots of fun. You guys, thanks so much for joining and all the supplies that I used today will be listed down below. And you guys, thanks so much for joining us for another episode, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.